This is EntreEd Talk, the podcast for entrepreneurial educators by entrepreneurial educators. We are your hosts, Toy Hirschman and Amber Ravenscroft. This podcast is created by the National Consortium for Entrepreneurship Education, or EntreEd for short. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to EntreEd Talk the podcast for entrepreneurship educators by entrepreneurship educators. We are so excited today to welcome Laura Lambert. Laura has spent the past 25 years in healthcare and education in Washington, D.C., L.A., Philadelphia, Tanzania, and Charleston, West Virginia. She's a strong advocate for social change and an entrepreneur herself. For 19 years, she owned and operated a nonprofit as a policy consultant for HIV and AIDS. In Washington, she was the senior healthcare lobbyist, lobbying at Congress and speaking at numerous state and national conventions on behalf of federal retirees. In LA, she served homeless elderly in a shared housing program, and she spent the early days of her career working for private corporations as a retiree benefits consultant. Currently, she is the director of community education for Bridge Valley, Bridge Valley Community and Technical College, where she serves as the college's representative on several entrepreneurship grants. Laura is a native of North Carolina, graduating from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill with a degree in communications. She earned a master's of science in gerontology and a master's of public administration from the University of Southern California in Los Angeles. She currently serves as the campaign chair for Charleston, West Virginia's largest arts organization and her amazing children, Haley and Nate, and she are all avid adventurers. So welcome, Laura. We are so excited to have you today. Thank you, my friend. How are you? Very, very well. Laura is also a great friend of ours and a partner with us on our America's Entrepreneurial Schools program, who, which she will talk about here in a little bit. Uh, she's done amazing things uh, with us and for us, and we're just very excited to have her. So to get started, Laura, um, you have done so many different and amazing things. Could you just share with us a little about your story and how you got to where you are today? Because from D.C. to Tanzania to Charleston, West Virginia, that's an interesting uh, journey for sure. (laughs) Not the normal path for most people, that's for sure. Um, I grew up in a really small town in North Carolina, 14,000 people. So when people... You know, folks refer to Charleston and other rural areas of West Virginia. You know, I I lived particularly the rural life. My dad was a town banker of sorts, so I couldn't get away with anything without, how's Charles? You know, everywhere you went. Um, Kind of annoying when you're a kid. You appreciate as an adult in those small town experiences. But because we're in a small town, my parents were avid travelers. They believed in showing us as much as they could the world and what was around us and all the opportunities we had. And so one of my parents' favorite saying was, was fly like a butterfly. And then when I first moved to California, they said, well, we didn't mean that far. <laughs> so, you know, it, it, you, you had to be careful what you wish for, right, with your kids. So I was raised to keep my eyes, I guess, wide open, really, and looking for opportunities where they came. I was not allowed to shy away from opportunities. I was encouraged to go for them. And so very much tried to teach my children the same thing. Um, so that travel bug that they instilled in us, it started with my grandparents. Really, the more I saw, the more I wanted to see and more I wanted to do. And I started making bucket lists of all the things I wanted to do. In fact, Toy, because we're friends, she and I have a little bucket list of a, a major adventure we want to do together um, called Machu Picchu. <laughs> right, Toy? <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah. So it never stops. I feel like I'm, I'm always like wanting to learn a new something new about a culture and adventure um, people. I like asking questions. I feel like questions lead to new opportunities. So that's kind of where I bounce from one thing to the next. You know, in your 20s, probably you come out of college you have plans and you, and you have, and you set goals. And I think you do meet them, but then, then you have to be flexible to where things take you. And so that's where this interesting path of mine, slightly different path took me. I came out of college and wanted to do volunteer work. So I landed with, um, I looked overseas at, at Peace Corps and various opportunities and landed with the Jesuits in California. So I've spent two different lifetimes in California, first with the Jesuits, living in group housing and working for homeless elderly, which actually a lot of uh, interesting, funny stories, because a lot of people I served were old showgirls who lived quite the life. Um, So 
that then led to coming back to the East Coast, working a bit. My mentor in L.A. is like, you're really good with older people. You should get a gerontology degree. And so things just kept opening up and opening up and new opportunities. And I, was, I bounced back and forth across the country two or three times and each time growing and changing and increasing my career opportunities. Um, so that's kind of where it started, where it continues to go. I'm always looking for opportunities and meet new people and have new adventures. I'm wow. so fascinated by it within like one small paragraph. We talked about Tanzania, old show girls, and a gerontology. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea what we you were doing. You don't see the connection? <laughs> <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit about the nonprofit that you worked on? Was that mm-hmm. in Tanzania or is that just your Peace Corps work? And So tell me, yeah, what was your nonprofit? Okay, so the nonprofit actually was here in West Virginia. I had been working as a consultant to the health department and then later worked with the West Virginia Disabilities Council as one of their um, legislative persons planners. And that was not quite a fit. And I think I recognized that early on and it was a good organization, but just I didn't have the same educational ideals that they wanted me to have in terms of lobbying for their organization. So I stay with them a little less than a year when I, um, it was actually advertised in the paper, the Charleston Gazette to run a nonprofit and be the exec director. And I'd always wanted to be an executive director and have my own thing and see where it went. So I entered into this um, agreement with the state health department, the state epidemiologist. And then literally after I got the job and it was an HIV and AIDS, but after I landed the job, I was told, and by the way, it's a grant and you'll reapply for it every year. So here started my grant experience that I didn't think, you know, when I was dissing it in grad school, oh, I'll never need that. You know, here it came around to my livelihood. I had to keep writing a grant to keep my job. It was an amazing opportunity because I was not a West Virginian. Recent kind of, you know, plant myself in West Virginia through marriage. And so it gave me the opportunity to go all over the state. There were eight different regions, 90 volunteers. So I traveled to meet with those folks and we came up with policy prevention plans for a specific region of the state. And I think I learned to quickly value the differences throughout West Virginia um, from the very rural to up in the panhandle to out near DC. It's just such an interesting state. And that helped me, I think, ever since then with with my current job, with that job, just getting to know the state, the 90 volunteers. Um, so that's how I fell into it. I fell into it and I thought it, it was basically funded through the Centers for Disease Control in Atlanta. So I answered to the CDC project officer, the state health department and my own board. When I took over this very young nonprofit, it was fledging. It was sad. I was getting, you know, notices, delinquent notices out the wazoo in my mail. And the person who had um, had it prior to me for a little over a year um, was not very responsible. And I was told, come in, turn around, whip those volunteers into shape, or you too will not have this nonprofit. And um, that was tough because the volunteers weren't used to that. They weren't used to somebody actually you know, organizing something, being accountable. We were accountable to federal dollars. That made me nervous. You know, if I'm going to be accountable to federal dollars, I want to make sure I do everything properly. And um, so I hired an accountant to do the books every year and do the final reconciliations and things you have to do. I didn't, you know, want to sign off on that. And, but I managed this nonprofit and the goal was to come up with an annual prevention plan for HIV and AIDS policy implications. So basically, where do we spend our dollars in West Virginia? And every state has this position or had it until they um, put it back in the state health departments. But in a jurisdiction like in New York or Texas, there might be 40 persons and there was me in West Virginia. So it's challenging. So they ended up they ended up putting it back into the the state health department. Is that what you said? And so that's. Yes. So I ran it for 19 years and it folded as I, as I describe it naturally, I was floored to use a nice Southern word that I could keep that job for that long. It became something that was just so much a part of me after applying for the grant year after year in a row, I talked the health department into let me do a three-year grant. I had competition in the beginning. Then people stopped going, you know, um, vying for the grant because they realized I'd kind of, got it down and it'd be hard 
you know, not to give it to me unless I just did something gravely wrong. <laughs> and so I built this relationship with the Ryan White Care folks, the CDC, um, the National Minority AIDS Council, all the you know, major players, and really lived, breathed it for 19 years, way longer than I thought I would. I thought I would die in, you know, a natural death of 15 years into, and it kept going. But the Centers for Disease Control, in the beginning of this um I guess, growth of HIV and AIDS and what they wanted to do with the policies throughout the country. They wanted the community to have a big impact. And so I was all about that and social change coming from the ground up. And that kind of spoke to who I'd been ever since in college. And then through the years, they decided, well, we want to bring it back to the health department. They're capable of taking it over. And in my opinion, yes, we all knew that was coming. I was you know, it was sad because I felt like they took away a large community aspect of it by bringing it back in the health department because it was solely run by me and these 90 volunteers um, throughout the state. So, and we had a state AIDS advisory council, which I co-chaired with a member of the community. So it was really grassroots and that was fun. And so I think as it's moved toward the health departments nationwide and CDC folded all these outside organizations like mine, um, it, it changed. It was a different element to it. Wow, that's that's a lot. That's a lot to take on just for one person and some volunteers. <laughs> that's incredible. Well, I go to these national meetings and they'd say, oh, well, you know, you should do some evaluations. And we just spent 40000 on evaluation, like 40000 <laughs> 40000 goes a long way in West Virginia for prevention and, and development. And so you know, they were talking numbers that we couldn't even touch. Um, so, yeah, that was interesting. To compare ourselves to other states. But when you're a low prevalence state, that's what you get. I mean, it's a blessing and a curse. You're low prevalence and you want it that way and you want your grassroots um, folks to be, you know, keeping the disease at bay or as low prevalence as possible. And at the same time, you're like, gosh, it'd be nice to have some of those resources those folks talk about, you know. So... Wow, that's that's. I mean, that that seems to be the common thread um, in in your in your journey, though. That even though even though you've had a, an amazing amazing winding path, you you seem to come back to that community advocacy and the grassroots stuff, which is really a beautiful thing. Um, and now, currently, you're the director of community education at Bridge Valley, which is where we met you. Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about that position and the things that you've been able to do? I know I've skulked around Bridge Valley a little bit with you and, and I'm just mm -hmm. amazed at the different things that you do there as part of your position. It's a, you know, the division that I, I'm the director of the Division of Community Education. I started here as um, a senior coordinator with workforce. And so I was asked to start this new division with one of the vice presidents. So it's a great opportunity for me to personally grow and for us to get something new off the ground for the college. But it's kind of like one of those divisions we've all worked in. If you don't know where to put it, you know, put it with X. And so we're the X. We're the put it with a community education if you don't know where to put it. <laughs> so it, it takes on a really interesting life. I manage about 10 different um, adjunct professors and multiple classes throughout the year and about 200 something students coming and going and work with financial aid and all these entities. But it's things like table games out at the local casino. It's, it reaches from that to high schoolers and SAT and ACT to allied health. And then for me, fortunately, because it's a where we put this, that's where the, the entrepreneurship work came. So we, they're looking, I think, you know, from the outside, our, my boss and one of the vice presidents was approached by you guys to work on this regional grant. And um, because she had other things on her plate, she asked me to be the point person. So she came to the original meeting and you guys, um, if I recall, it's February two and a half years ago, came in to teach all of us what this grant you know, process is about and the different players, the national and state and local levels and the regional colleges involved. And there's a lot of energy in the room. And um, I kind of feed off it energy. I, um, I think I'm good at creating it, but I also love when somebody's got an idea and then it like just blows my mind to want to do something, you know, in addition or alongside or be a part of. So we were given to start with Clay County, one of the um, most econ economically challenged, I guess, uh, counties in the state. And it's, you get off the highway and it's another 30 minutes off the highway 
on the interstate to get to this county, and it literally lies in a hollow, in my mind, from what I think of a traditional hollow. It's a town between two mountains on each side. And, you know, self-service is spotty, and um, there's not a lot of resources in the community. You can barely find a restaurant. But it's the most warm and wonderful and hardworking people that you'll find. And so with that, I got super lucky on this grant because I, you know, working with you, Toy, and then the greater community, Amber, and everybody else, we we went in first as a college to introduce ourselves at the top level, the superintendent's level. And he quickly introduced us to the assistant superintendent, who's just been amazing. And she's bought on bought into entrepreneurship for her students countywide, K through 12, because she sees there's not a lot of jobs in Clay County. So if you want to make it happen, you're going to have to create it. And so getting the students into that mindset. So having her on board from the beginning really was how it started. We, it wasn't a hard sell job. I think we could have sold it had we had, you know, but she just was on board. She quickly said, yes, let's meet this summer. Let's get the teachers involved. And so from the get go, we had an amazing county to work with. And then because that was successful, the grant has grown and we've gone into other counties and um, and outshoots of that grant become you know another foundation grant. But, you know, it was really, really someone who was dedicated at the ground you know level in the county that got it for us, helping us. And what I think is one of the best benefits to the college is not only do I get to have that relationship with them on the entrepreneurship level, but they'll call me, hey, we're having a job fair and just want Bridge Valley there because you might want to recruit some students. And we are just, it's awesome to see in just a short period of time, we're one of the first people they call, hey, come in. And we might be next to the National Guard or some other type of recruiting or another community college. Not really, I can take that back. Not, we're kind of the community <laughs> college represented there because we've grown that relationship. <laughs> but it'd be other, you know, um, Job Corps and other types of programs there. And I love it because you know, to be the first on their list, to be top of their list, that they're, you know, to reach out to us, hey, can you come? Yes, is always the answer. Why would we turn that down? So it's been a great, you know, recruitment tool and community building tool, and it's just really grown in a lot of fun ways. When you're very modest, but that relationship is due in in every part, in every way, because of you and your outreach to the schools. You know, we we work with different colleges and things, and you have just, I mean, you took you took that <laughs> to baton and you just ran with it and, and your, you know, your connection with them and, and keeping that relationship open has been the reason why Clay County is one of our, if not our most successful um, implementation. I mean, and it's, and, and Laura was able to get the entire county on board, every single school in the county, which is pretty incredible. And uh, we were able to do an amazing whole county banner presentation with them and the, the relationship continues to be a, a good one. And as Laura kind of mentioned, um, we we were able to get a community, a local community foundation grant a kind of as an offshoot. And she's been working with, with Entre Ed and, and with that grant also to design and implement these really <laughs> amazing STEM and entrepreneurship days at Bridge Valley's Technical Center. So that's that's all, that's all Laura, even though she won't tell you that <laughs> not all Laura but thank you <laughs> we you know Toy you mentioned that and um we got to through that grant that foundation grant got to work with one of my favorite populations which wait for it it's middle school oh. and most people are like you gotta be kidding me but I got to be a substitute teacher off and on for six years in middle school while I was running the nonprofit. I did that on the side and I love middle schoolers because they want to learn. They still want mentorship. They still want a, an adult voice. And you get that opportunity to reach them. And if you can talk their language and, and give it to them straight, they really just suck onto you kind of. Um, and so this that grant has been so fun because we get, you know, these formative persons and uh it's been i think fifth has also been included in that rising sixth so fifth sixth seventh eighth that's just been a blast we've brought them here to bridge valley we utilize the whole space at advanced technology center we take over the whole building we set up stations um, we do some group feedback we've had the foundation board members come and observe and they've had fun it's just it's a day of yay i get to do this today and it's just all fun there's nothing about it that's not fun 
Yeah, and they're and learning think- things as well. Like they're having fun and also learning. It's like a yeah. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh yeah. By the way, <laughs> that's true. I have mixed feelings about middle school, right? But I, I think the uh-huh. key of middle school is that you give them engaging curriculum, and then they're awesome. The key is the yeah. the key is what you do with them because they are incredible age to work with. But if you are giving them stale content, they'll let you know it's stale. So that's, um, yes, that's why I like them. They will let you know it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. So um, I I love the STEM and entrepreneurship camps. I've been following them. I think we should talk, Toy, about how Clay County did their countywide implementation of AES because they had a really unique approach um, with their their market fair. So, Laura, I don't know if you want to talk about that a little bit. I'll talk that a little bit, and I'm going to let Toy fill in because she knows as much as I do. We had a great day together at that market fair, um, just representing Bridge Valley and AES, but also going around and talking to the students and the teachers. They decided at every single classroom level, although they were already doing things in like elementary called tech steps and they were the high school level doing, you know, FFA and stuff, they wanted to do more. So they had each class come up with creations of, you know, just, you know, soaps, candles, um, planter boxes, you name it, we saw it. And it was fun. Some classes did it as a whole. Some classes said, okay, students, you know, figure out what you want to create and individually do it. And then they set up booths as if you were at a, you know, county fair or market or farmer's market. And they set up booths where people could come and buy their wares. And then all the students from the county circulated throughout the day into the gym at Clay County High School. And, you know, Families and other folks were invited in as well um, to partake. So, yes, a lot of fun. Students got to see other people, you know, each other's work and their peers' work and get encouraged by other people's creativity and then to show off their wares. It's always, I think, important to be able, if you're a creative person, have a place to, you know, bring it to the public. Um, so, you know, they did that. I don't, you know, we encouraged them to do something even new, um, newer the next year, but the market fair was extremely successful. I mean, Tori, what would you, from your perspective, I, say about I, that? I just, that was such a fun, that was such a fun day. We have a lot of schools that do, that do market fairs and um, they're, they're always really fun, but this one was so unique because it was completely student led. Um, the team, there was a team of high school students that took this over. They even presented to Laura and I to get a little bit of grant funding to help them run, run the day and get some supplies. They organized the buses. They, um, they organized kind of the the traffic flow through the gym, through the gym. And, and it just from, from start to finish, this team was unbelievable. And I think the coolest thing about it was that these, when we, when Laura and I met these kids, I would have told you that they were, you know, the highest, the top, the, you know, the top level kids in the building, which shows my stereotyping. Um, but they were not. In fact, the, mm-hmm. the teacher shared with us that some of these kids were like, you know, in trouble of graduate for graduation and, and, and this class they were in turned their lives around. And then this opportunity, I mean, they just handled it like professionals and it was mm-hmm. a beautiful thing to see and, and did an amazing job. And I mean, I still, that market fair, it was, there were some, some things that, you know, the, the slime and things, but there were a lot of really unique products there that I still have that I use every mm-hmm. day. That I bought. So it's, Dang. it's really, it was really amazing. I think too, Toy, you know, to add to that, you, you sparked a thought with me is that they took a year long class and it was kind of a class culminating in tourism and entrepreneurship and all kinds of things. All those students told us they really didn't think they were college material when they started that class. And I thought one of the best, you know, exciting things was yes, that leadership was amazing. And also I think what we saw grow throughout that year, because we visited them several times at came to Bridge Valley several times is they started believing in themselves. And that's exactly what we want to do with the whole entrepreneurship concept. You're in a community in a hollow and how do you create a life? And they start believing in themselves. We recruited Bridge Valley students out of that group, two of them, two of them out of a group of about 10 said, Hey, I'm coming to Bridge Valley next year and just just to see that energy grow and for them to take ownership and believe that yes I can create something and make it happen that was exciting yes that was it that's huge it's hard when you're in that that 
very isolated type of situation because you don't always see examples of people that are successful or doing really incredible things. And so I, I believe that in, in some part that, that the program helped to, you know, change, change the trajectory, trajectory of their lives as well. So it, it was really incredible. Mm-hmm. I agree. That's put- beautiful. Yeah. I, that mean, that gave me goosebumps. <laughs> oh, I, didn't know, I didn't know you had commitments. That's awesome. We we talk all yeah. the time about yeah. like how this yeah. relationship between the community colleges and K twelve has really strengthened those ties. But that's awesome that they uh, this group of students who were uh, pr- not even problem they were at risk students, right? We'll call them mm-hmm. at mm-hmm. risk students that they have found that that future pathway through this entrepreneurship program. I think that's huge. Mm-hmm. It is huge. It is huge for any individual, for you, for me, for Amber, for all of us. Why, eyes wide open. I always tell my kids, you don't know the opportunities to you ask the questions, to you look around, you stop and listen. And that will take you so far in life. And then you'll meet your best friends and you'll meet the people who enjoy doing what you enjoy. And you'll get this career that you never expected. And, you know, there's opportunities everywhere. And I think that's the whole point of entrepreneurship is, is keep an open mind work with what you have and then grow it and make those partnerships and build those, not just partnerships, but friendships, and they will carry you a long, long way. I love that. I also, I want to um, go back to something you said earlier about like the energy in a room and how that is, can be so inspiring and how we talked about when we first got together for this America's Entrepreneurial Schools grant, there was so much energy, but I also think it's important to stress that if there isn't, be that energy, right? So like oh, be yeah. the person <laughs> that brings the energy to the room and like gets other people excited because I think that's a really inherently entrepreneurial skill to, to be that energy for people. And I think it goes in, in with that eyes wide open kind of approach to life. Um, finding that energy in any situation is really important. I agree. And, and giving others your trust that they're going to bring it on as much as you will. You know, sometimes I think people in a room are intimidated by that energy, but you give them that trust and that respect of, you know, mutual energy, you bring, show me, you know, bring it on, show me what you got and I'm going to keep growing with you. Um, and I think, you know, that's at all levels, not just students that we work with, but adults too. It's, it's a, I think you got to build the trust and say, I I'm, I'm here, you know, show me, teach me. Yeah. Anybody that's ever been in a room with Toy or I during professional development is probably terrified of our energy. <laughs> <laughs> I think how many things, same. Yeah. <laughs> terrified. I love that you use that word. <laughs> yeah. Like, Holy, yeah. I don't know if I can get as fired up as these women, but we, we've challenged It's called them passion. Too. It's always good to have a little passion. <laughs> well, thanks, ladies. It's been fun. Anything that else I can so say or do? morning that's it's very exciting and um so laura before we wrap up um if you want to share how can other people get in touch with you if they if they want to okay um so i'm the director of community education at bridge valley i have a very if you want to reach anybody at bridge valley including me it's typically first name dot last name so i'm laura l-a-u-r-a dot lambert l-a-m-b-e-r-t at bridgevalley.edu. Um, I also, I'm all over the building. So sometimes phone calls are hard because they'll say I called you and I'm like, well, I was with, have meetings all over the building because part of what I do is reach out to build those relationships in my own internal community so I can help students. But my direct line is 304-205-6650. Love to talk to you, Maddie. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. And thank you. If Amber, do you have anything else? Or with, if not, we will we will say goodbye and hopefully we can have you come back for a future episode. We like we like repeats. <laughs> <laughs> as long as you don't say the same thing, right? No. Nope. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. No, I think yeah, we awesome. can talk, talk for a, a full hour on the ex showgirls. I think that that should be the <laughs> Yeah, <honest>. you could. <laughs> I learned a lot at 22, yeah. things I didn't know I would. We yeah. Should, yeah, we should yeah. have a, like, a whole episode on um, elderly. <laughs> <You're>, yeah, <laughs> I'm yeah. with you. I, I didn't know almost anything that I learned today about your life 
And I'm so, I'm so fascinated and I can't wait to hear more. And um, thank you so much for joining us. It's been really, really cool experience to, to get to know you more. Thank you. Thank you. Good to talk to you guys. Have a great day. You too, Laura. All right. Bye.